Hello, I'm Horion Gracie. We are all aware of the dangers that women face on the streets, the highways, or even in their own homes. Unfortunately, almost all of us have been touched by a rape or an assault, either personally or through the terrible experience of a friend or a loved one. Suddenly, statistics become very personal. Most victims will tell you that the worst part of a rape or an assault is the feeling of helplessness that they experience the feeling that there was nothing they could do. I'm going to show you some things you can do. These moves have been popular for many years because they operate on one simple principle. Leverage and technique can overcome size and strength. It is my goal with rape safe classes and seminars across the country. And now this instructional video to share with you the realistic rape prevention techniques that we teach at the Gracie Academy. The drills you're going to be seeing on this segment of the tape are the foundation for the techniques you're going to be using throughout the whole tape. So I recommend that you take your time and practice them a lot. It is very important when you consider learning how to defend yourself that you must listen to your gut feeling. If you ever find yourself going in a direction of a situation that it doesn't ring right, you must listen to your intuition and think about stopping and changing the whole thing, stepping back and avoiding it. I have asked Marianne to help me in showing you some of these techniques. <clears throat> Sometimes, if the individual is approaching you, you want to avoid letting him get too close to you. So you can, of course, notice when he's getting closer and closer. And you should ima draw an imaginary line so that as soon as he feel that you feel that he's getting close to that, you should show him that you mean business and you're willing to take a serious stance to show him that you're ready to, you know, confront that situation by doing something like this. Stop! So by just letting the individual know that you're ready for action, he now has to make up his mind. He's going to see, well, this woman really is ready to do something. It's very important to, you know, feel comfortable with that. And don't let yourself be distracted or intimidated by the fact that you might look silly. What is he going to think of me? Don't take any chances. Do what you have to do. Listen to your inner self. <clears throat> if you ever find yourself approached or pressured by an individual and he's really getting close to you, it is time for you at that moment to, if you have to, strike the person. A lot of people don't know how to strike effectively. Some women would think about punching at him or slapping the guy in the face or doing something like this. It might not have the kind of impact that you'd like to. Therefore, what I recommend is that you use a full slap by using a hand like this, aiming towards the guy's ear. The idea for you to get a comfortable and very effective uh, strong hit in this move and the perfect way to, to exercise this drill is let your arm swing freely this way and as you do it faster and faster with the hands real loose you will feel the momentum that increases tremendously on the hand. So a hit like this can really stun the guy and be very uh, distracting to say the, list, the least. Uh, if you do it right you should feel a tingling on the tip of your fingers. That's what you feel. What he feels, you'll see. <laughs> it's a whole different ball game. Anyways, uh, another very common uh, situation that might occur, and is very important that we feel very comfortable with, is if you have to stand up before, during, or even you know uh, after a situation. You should always get up correctly. Please, Marianne. <clears throat> a lot of people underestimate the importance of knowing how to stand up correctly. We call this standing up in base. If you don't know how to stand up correctly, you find yourself very, very vulnerable. For example, if the person is trying to get up like this, the attacker could just push you back or could, once again, please, try to strike at you at this moment. Some other people might get up like this, standing up straight. Still easy for him to control that situation with no problem because you are vulnerable. You're not in good base. And if you're sitting on a, on a park, for example, and a suspect a sit, uh, an individual comes up to you at this point and says, Hey, girl, what are you doing here by this time of the day by yourself? The sun is gone. I mean, I think you're lonely. I'd like to keep you company. And if you just get up in a wrong way, he can push back, jump on top of you at this point, attack you and do anything. And you, it's not a good position to be in. At this point, I recommend that you put your hand on the ground like this. Put one leg up. Rest your arm comfortably on your knee in a very discreet manner. He's not aware of what you're doing because he has no idea what this position means. But from here, if you stand up in base like this, he cannot push you back on the ground again. One more time, please. 
just by resting your hand on the ground, bringing your legs this way, and resting your weight here, if you do it right, you should be able to rest your weight on that arm and raise your hip as well as your foot off the ground. So you're totally off the ground at this point. So the idea is to bring your leg under, plant your foot on the ground, and then be ready to lean the weight towards me so the attacker cannot push you back. To give you an idea of how effective this position is in terms of balance, observe this. If I'm trying to push Marianne that way, even if I were to put all my weight against the wall, she can really e easily support my weight without you know, moving the balance around or anything like that. If I had to push her to the side like this, I can't push. Or if I were to drag her into a car with me or into a dark alley, it's very easy for her to support the weight that way. So a simple position like base gives a lot of effectiveness and it can be tremendously uh, beneficial to be familiarized with that kind of position. Using the same principle of standing up in base, there's a couple of other drills that can be very helpful. Please lie down. One of them is if you're sitting up, please, man. She's going to be sitting up like this, and now she's going to be moving back away from me and just kicking the foot this way. That's another exercise that we should be doing, which is going to have its benefits. Yes. Yes, it's extremely good to be doing this exercise a little bit at a time. Man, this way, please, come towards me. So you should do it both ways. Put your weight in your hand, kick straight this way, and then go back the other way, please. When you use your foot this way, you should make sure that your foot is straight instead of letting your foot move around. Make sure that you focus as if you're finding a target. Okay, there you go, great. So a simple exercise like this, again, these are just tools that you're gonna be getting familiarized with because later on, there'll be you know, applications for all of those. This next drill is called the hip swivel. Check this out. You put one foot flat on the ground and keep your other leg flat also on the ground, a little bit sideways on your foot. Your weight should be on your shoulder down here, okay? Keep your arms straight and then swing your hip back this way. You can then change legs, put the other foot up, flat leg on the ground, weight on your shoulder and swivel your hip back this way. It is the same principle of the move that we did before, which is having your leg up and then raising your hip and swiveling your hip under. You can from do it with your hand, you can put your elbow on the ground like this, or you can put your shoulder on the ground, we just did, and swivel your hip away. It's a very helpful move. You're going to be using this a lot throughout the tape. Now that you have seen the drills, let's apply them. Marianne, can you help me, please? Something as simple as standing correctly in base might be a very important thing to do to prevent an attacker from pushing you into a car or into a dark alley or something like that. If you don't have the proper base, it'll be very easy for the person to just carry you with him or drag you along this way. However, if you open your legs like this, slightly bend your knee so that you feel a comfortable position you can kind of ride that moment, and lean the weight towards the push. The more I push, the more you lean the weight to this side. So observe that Marianne's arms are very relaxed, like this. She, all she has to do is lean according to respond to the amount of push, the force that I'm you know, driving that way. The same thing can be done if I'm trying to drag her with me. She then leans the weight to the other side, and I can just you know, make it much more difficult for me to pull her with me. Sometimes, close your leg, please. If you get caught by surprise, and the person just suddenly pushes you over, even if you have to take a step to eventually get yourself in base, it still works very well and makes it very difficult for the guy close your leg, please. Right here, now it's difficult for him to drag you along with him. So just being conscious and being aware of your position that you can lean your body one way or the other makes it very difficult for the guy to drag you along. So that's a good exercise. And when practicing this move with a friend or a partner, you should just make the person gradually start pushing the weight so that you can get the sense of controlling the amount of weight, body weight that you should lean towards the opponent side. <coughs> Close your leg, please. So the idea while you're drilling and doing the exercise is not try to surprise each other and just jerk them on the shoulder, but instead give your partner the opportunity to very gradually get used to the sense of balance that you can just kind of add to the movement very slowly so that you can encourage them to build that base very gradually. So. Yes, do this, a good move. 
and then eventually go this way. Yes, and lean the way. All right. The more relaxed, the better. Good. Thank you. Tita, would you help me out, please? Thank you. Nancy, would you help me out, please? Thank you. Marisa, please. Thank you. Suzanne, help me out, please. Thank you. Another very common situation is if the attacker wants to strangle you like this. It's a simple move, but very easy for him to grab to your neck like this. You have to keep in mind that the opponent's chances are he's bigger, heavier, and stronger than you. Therefore, if you try to escape by pushing my arms apart, or forcing the arms down, or striking at his face, or even hitting him with the knee on the groin, remember, nothing's gonna stop that guy from letting go of you for a second and smack you in the face again. So the idea is, you must have a way to get out without using strength, speed, or having to use power to get away from something like this. When a person grabs your neck like this, if you simply bend forward like that and go under the arm, it makes it virtually impossible for him to stop you from doing this because you're using the leverage of your whole body against you know, just two of his thumbs. There's no way that these thumbs can stop your whole body from bending forward. It is important, though, that you tighten up your neck like this so that you have more resistance on the neck muscles, and therefore, you're not, not so, it doesn't bother your neck so much. It gives you a little more resistance. So when the person grabs your neck like this, you hit, yes, that's the move. Either side would work well, one way or the other. Remember, it's something as simple as just drawing at you with your head, that you can just go straight down forward and then under the arm. Head goes down. All you have to do is go down low enough to clear your attacker's arm. And be sure that you don't bend your knees as you do this move. So from this position, when the person grabs your neck, you tighten your neck muscles like this and go under his arm, okay? If the guy is holding you so close that you don't have the space to bend forward because your head is gonna run into his chest, you could take a step back in base and then come back with a slap afterwards. So a step back in base, it's going to increase your distance between you and the attacker, giving you a much better chance, much more leverage to get away from the hold. So one more time, please. And then come back and run away. Tita, would you help me out, please? Nancy, can I have your help, please? Suzanne, please. Marisa, help me out, please. Remember, when practicing this technique, you want to make sure not to squeeze your, your partner's neck too tight. You don't want to get your partner mad, because this kind of slap can be a real stinger. Now, and after each technique in this tape, you see a full speed demonstration. Another very common situation is if the attacker decides to get a hold of you by holding your wrists. If the person grabs your wrist like this, a lot of people might try to get out by just shaking their hands or moving their hands up and down. And if the attacker is very strong, it might be difficult to break away from him. The trick to escape from this move is to make sure that you turn, first of all, you want to turn your wrist sideways so that the narrow part of your wrist gets sideways against his grip. Instead of trying to pull it out this way, you want to make sure to turn your wrist this way so that you can escape like with the blade of the arm. So at this point here, Marianne is going to close her hand for more consistency. It's like, turn the wrist and bring the hand out. Yes, like this. 
one more time. The trick is to find the thin part of the wrist and then push the elbow forward. Even if the person is holding very tight, which you should gradually increase the pressure, not start by squeezing too hard. Your main concern, as I said, is to find the blade of the arm into the groove in the opening between his fingers. And then push the elbow forward to force your hand to slip out. If instead of grabbing this way, your attacker has this kind of grip, pulling the hands back towards you, it's not going to solve the problem. Therefore, in this case, what you should do is bring your hand down, rotate the wrist this way, and then once again, finding the opening between my fingers, push the elbow forward. The other hand, please. She turns the wrist, rotates the wrist, and then pushes the elbow forward. What makes it very difficult for the person to hold on at this point is that as you turn the wrist and you start rotating the wrist here, that it clicks into the opening here now between his hands. That's the chance. And the idea is to drive your thumb out as you push your elbow forward. The leverage comes from the elbow pushing forward, not from your hand pulling back. Another thing that is very helpful is this you keep in mind that you should always end up with your hand towards your shoulder. So from this position here, you find the groove on the wrist, push the elbow forward like this, and your hands end up on your shoulder. The purpose of this is get you set up so that you can swing that hand back and once again come back with a slap to the attacker's face. So it will be something like this, you free the wrist. And one more time, please, running away. One, two. Nancy, would you help me out, please? Tita, would you help me out, please? Marisa, please. Please, Suzanne. You're going with me! In this next segment, we are going to address what to do if an attacker comes up to you and decides to grab you by the waist like this. Some people might try to push him off this way, push him away with the hip, or even try to hit him with the knee, but it's too close. You don't have the angle to strike at the guy at this point. The first thing you have to keep in mind is that you don't want to let him get that close to begin with. So, of course, you can see an attacker coming close towards you. And as soon as you sense that he's getting too close, at this point, you want to take a step back in base. You want to hold your wrist like this, making sure that you have a solid square frame on the arm. Hold your own wrist like this so that you can support his neck with this part of the arm. Putting the blade of the arm against my neck this way so that the more I pull close, the more I will choke myself with the blade of the arm. From here, yeah, forcing the guy to let go and then completing with a slap. Observe Marianne's step back when she does this move. She's in base. I mean, it's very difficult for me to push her this way or pull her that way. It's the same base we talked about before. <clears throat> also, when you practice this technique, remember to allow your partner to take the time and gradually build up their confidence on the move. You don't want to just get a hold of your partner and just bring him back and show that they can't do it. If the idea is to help them improve in their effectiveness in self-defense, you want to help them to kind of gradually increase the leverage on the move. So as the person gets close like this, you take a step back, establishing your base, make a solid frame with this arm, and when I let go, slap. <laughs> Tida, would you help me demonstrate this, please? Nancy, would you help me out, please? Suzanne, please. Marisa, please. Come here, sweetheart. This time, the attacker sneaks behind your back and grabs you in a choke like this. 
A lot of people at this point might try to yank their hand away, which you can't do because he's so strong, he's holding your neck. Some people might try to strike at the opponent, but once again, you don't have enough leverage to be able to knock him out. Or you try to hit him on the, on the groins or anything like this, but he can always hit you if he has to. The idea is to protect your neck with both hands so that you can make sure that he can't get any closer to your neck, can't squeeze. Even if I were to try to pick you up like this by the neck, he can't cause any major damage because your hands like this have a lot of leverage to keep my arm far enough away from your neck so that you won't get hurt. So your first movement is to put your hands here and slightly bend your knees in base so that you now are not going to be pushed over too easily. You have a better balance this way. From this position, you should take a step back with this leg around my leg and then resting the weight on my arm, allow your body to swing around this way so that you can get yourself in a 180 degree step from this side all the way to that side. You must keep your body leaning forward so that the attacker can't force you back and throw you off balance. The trick is to stay here, armed up in base like this so that he can't force you back. Now she's got a very solid base this way. And because she has stepped around 180 degrees, I'm already leaning back in this position which makes it very easy for her to just put the head down and throw me off balance at this point. Go ahead, please. One more time, please. So if the attacker comes from behind and grabs your neck like this, both hands should go in the arm to protect your neck. Even if the guy picks you up, he can't hurt you anymore. But remember, rest your weight, take a step behind my leg like this, and then spin around, allowing your body to spin. You might have to be you know, careful that you must readjust this foot so that your foot is comfortable like this and you find yourself again in a solid base. Once you establish your base like this, remember, keep your body weight leaning forward and drive your head inside of your knee like this. Remember, be careful when you practice this technique so that you don't throw your partner in a bad way. As a matter of fact, you should be very careful controlling your balance and gradually throw your partner on the ground, hopefully, of course, in a matted area or in a comfortably padded area so that nobody gets hurt while you're practicing this technique. Save the pain for the bad guy. Nancy, would you be kind enough to help me out, please? Tida, I would like to have your help again, please. Marisa, please. Suzanne, help me out, please. Now you're mine. Sometimes your attacker might have gone crazy and decides to just come and punch at you. Some people might think that a good solution for something like this is simply trying to put their hands up and try to block the hits or duck, but you don't stop the guy from continually attacking you. In that case, what you should do is when the person swings a punch at you, you should bring both hands inside of his arm like this. Even if I throw the punch with one hand, whichever hand that might be, you should always block both sides. Because if the person throws a punch and you just block with one hand, he still has that a free hand to try to swing at you. So be sure that you come up with both hands. The movement for your arms is coming from inside out, doing this kind of motion, as if you're diving and then your hands come around his bicep. So the movement is this, you block the arm here, Observe, please do not use your thumb so that you don't jam your thumb back. Keep your hand like this. The arm should be relaxed. Yes, very casual like this. And again, when you're practicing this technique, help your partner to gradually feel the leverage that they can develop by just angling your arm right. 
by putting your arm in this angle slightly bent, you can prevent the person from getting to your face. A good exercise is to do this move and bring your hands like this so that you can start feeling the firmness on that arm. Once you have the arm trapped this way, you want to bring the elbow over the wrist, secure like this, and then control the elbow. As a matter of fact, you know what? Let's turn this way here. So one, trap the arm over, secure the elbow, and keep my arm pinned down under your arm pit with your bicep like this. Once you have this control, bring your hand across my chest, bracing me with your elbow across the chest like this, and this hand on my shoulder so that I can't get any closer. That's the plan. From here, establish your base like this. Plant yourself in a comfortable stand like that. This should be a comfortable and solid enough position right here so the guy can't move you around too much. With the arm keeping me away, even if I were to swing Marianne around, the base remains the same. From this position here now, now that you have a good solid base, you can bring the knee here to distract your opponent this way, and then bring the leg around, hook my leg, and take the guy back. Completing a move like that. Observe that after you trap the arm, secure the hand over the wrist like this, and establish your base. Once you hit twice with the knee, take a moment to take a step with this leg, then bring the leg back. The idea, yes, good point, is once you secure the arm and put your, your, your forearm across the opponent's chest, the, the idea is to swing your leg as a pendulum, so your head goes down while your leg goes up. Be sure that you do not plant your foot on the ground. Bring your leg around. Don't put your foot on the ground here, or it will be easy for the opponent to take the leg out. The trick at this point is to make sure then you take a step, swing the leg, but never stop so that you can drive. So that you can drive your opponent like that. Once again, from this side, strap the arm. Knee hit, knee hit. Right, right. Tito, would you help me out again, please? Nancy, would you be kind enough to help me demonstrate this move, please? Suzanne, can you help me on this, please? Marisa, help me out, please. Shut up! Remember, the standing up techniques that we just saw are very helpful and hopefully will give you a chance to break away from your opponent and if you have a chance, run away. As a matter of fact, any time you sense a difficult situation coming up, the safest thing you can do is just avoid that by running away. That's always a smart thing to do. You don't want to stick around and fight with a person. However, let me remind you something. This is not a cooking class. It's time for us to address the real problems that could happen when a man wants to attack a woman. Marianne, lay down, please. Let's suppose you are either taken down by an opponent during an altercation, or even worse, you could wake up in the middle of the night and have an individual holding you down like this. He's now on top of you. What would you do in a situation like that in terms of trying to get him out? If the person wants to stay here, now he's hugging you. Get correct? off of me! What are you doing? Get off! Stop! Go on, get off of me! What are you trying to do? Come on, quit it! Stop! 
You're hurting me. Get off. It's easy for an opponent in a situation like this to control you down because you don't have enough leverage to force him out. At this point, you are absolutely at his mercy. For him to grab you, hug you, touch you, caress you, do anything he wants, hit you if he has to, it's a very, thing, very simple, very accessible thing for him to do. You can't punch him back. You don't have enough reach to do that. You don't have enough angle to hit him on the groin. To try to muscle this guy out of here, it's not going to work. And remember, at any time, he can always hit you back. What are we going to do in a situation like this? That's the big question. We'll see this one in the next tape. Just kidding. The idea is this. Once the opponent is on top of you like this, let's suppose he's trying to squeeze your neck or touch your body, touch your breast, or anything like that. He's trying to control you, caress you, whatever. The first thing you should do is keep your elbows next to your body like this so that my knees can't move up. You're now bracing my knees with your elbows. From a position like this, you should secure my wrist, keeping the hand glued to your chest and the rest of your body glued to your body, like the rest of your arm glued to your body like this. This hand will secure my elbow, preventing me from putting my hand on the ground. That foot goes outside of my leg, trapping my foot this way. Check this out. Let me go for a sec. You should trap just one foot and the other leg is inside my legs like this. So you only trap one side. The same side of the arm. Once the arm is trapped, the hand is trapped, the foot's locked like this. And from this position, securing my arm, preventing me from putting my hand on the ground, you can now raise your hip slowly straight up. And I don't have a free hand. And it's easy for you to throw him off. One more time, please. So the guy, even if he, for example, he's holding you tight like this, embracing you close, you can secure the arm by doing this move. The second hand would wedge my hip like this. Trap my foot on the same side of the arm that is secured. Your head is now pinning my arm down so I can't get it out. And as you raise your hip, I can't brace myself and you should be able to throw him off. From this position, you can complete the action by striking him on the groin pushing yourself off, and then running away from him. It's a great technique. In 70 years that my family has been involved in the art of Jiu-Jitsu, not one person ever was able to escape from this position unless they were properly taught. Marianne, would you lay down, please, so we can do this move again? So you want to keep your elbows here, secure the wrist, trap the arm. It is important that you keep your elbows next to the knee like this, because if you don't, I would be able to slide my legs forward, and now if you raise your hip, you would not be able to jeopardize my balance. So the elbows are here, the arm is trapped. Be sure you hold my wrist without using your thumb, because if you grab your thumb, I might be able to pull the hand free. This hand here, if I have a jacket, you can grab the jacket. If I don't, you secure the back of the arm, lock the foot. Now, last but not least, it is crucial that in a situation like, if you find yourself in a situation like this, instead of trying to fight with your opponent, you should try to talk to him. Say, look, don't hurt me, I'll do anything you want. Come on, don't be rough on me, whatever. Come up with a line to show the opponent who is fighting for power that he has control over the situation while you slither your way into securing his arm like this. So instead of trying to fight and beat him up, you just say try to converse with him and see if you can somehow negotiate with the guy and just, you know, very discreetly secure the grip because he has no idea he's going to be flying out now. Once you have this under control, raise your hip, roll out, <coughs> right? And out you go. Nancy will help me demonstrate this move now. Look, you don't have to hurt me. Look, we can work this out. Tida will help me demonstrate this now. Don't hurt me. I'll do anything you want. Now, Marisa. Don't hurt me. I'll do anything you want. 
Now, Suzanne. Don't hurt me, please. You're gonna do what I say! Take it easy! So if you thought the previous situation was dangerous, get ready. Here's where the real nightmare begins. Now, you find yourself with an individual that has just got a hold of you, threw you on the ground, and is inside of your legs like this. How do you think you're going to get out of something like this? Get off of me, you jerk! Hey. Get off! What are you trying to do? Hey. Trying to hurt somebody from this position, it doesn't work. Remember, rape is a crime of power. The guy wants to show you that he has control on the situation. So the more you fight and the more you try to strike, he is become in a position of trying to really control you. Also, I must remind you at this point that sometimes a person that reacts, reacts fights back, screams, could get away and maybe intimidate the opponent. But when we get to a situation like this where he's on top of you on the ground, it's going to be very hard for him to just let go of you because you try to slap him a little bit on the back or try to scratch him or something like this. And worst of all, remember, he can always punch you back harder. So the question is, how are we going to find a way to, with leverage and technique, build enough power for, to get you out of here? This is the movement. Once you find yourself in a situation like this, the first thing you have to do is try to sue the guy and remind him that he's got control of the situation. So instead of trying to fight the guy, beat him up, and argue with him and hurt him, you want to remind the guy that he has to control on the situation. Take it easy. Take it easy. You don't have to be rough. It's a line that we suggest all the time. Don't hurt me. Take it easy. You don't have to be rough. I mean, you, once again, you have to kind of convince him that he has the control on the situation so he doesn't have to worry about trying to hurt you at this time. Once you have the arms like this, which is always a good idea to prevent the guy from suddenly striking at you or hitting or slapping in your face, once you have your hands here and you start to talk to the guy in order to kind of slow him down, you can just either push off his arm, plant your foot on the ground, and scoot your hip away, which will create a space to put your foot on my hip just like this. Once you have established this foot on my hip, you now can move the, hip, the foot back, slide your shoulder back, and once again, push yourself further back away from him. With the leg straight, if the guy tried to go towards you, he's actually pushing you away from him because you're bracing yourself with his knee. From this position, you can now sit up, scoot your hip away from him further, and then stand up in base, getting away from your attacker. If the person is, for example, holding your arms, you can again put your hand on his knee, bracing yourself by locking your elbows straight. He is holding you, he thinks he's got you here, but he doesn't realize that this arm is already going to give you enough support that you can push yourself away with this. Swivel your hip away. Marian, back up for a sec, please. From here, brace your hand, swivel your hip away, just like we saw earlier. Plant your foot on my hip, and now from here, reposition this foot, move your shoulder back. You don't want to push the attacker away. He probably bigger, heavier, and stronger, as we talked about before. Therefore, you want to push yourself away from him. As you lock your hip, your leg straight, and move your hip back, if the guy going to try to get a hold of you now, you can always kick him back on the face, which is another drill we talked about a little bit earlier. So you go towards him and kick him on the face here. <laughs> Works very effectively. From this position here, as you scoot your hip away, if the attacker decides to get a hold of your feet and grab you here so you can't escape, you can now smack him on the ear with a slap, which is very distracting to say the least, and then get up in base, and out you go. One more time, please. I'd like to turn position on this side. There we go. So once you have this, you put your hand on his knee, right? Plant your foot on the ground, and swivel your hip to this side. Back up, Marian. The trick is to raise your hip about one inch off the ground so that you don't drag your hip on the ground 
but instead you glide over the ground. Slide your hip away, please, like this. Now she plants the foot on my hip, moves the leg back, the shoulder goes back, sits up, and once again keeps pushing her hip away from me. With the foot on the ground, she can now sit up straight, bracing herself on that same position that you know how to stand up from. If the guy grabs the foot, she can slap him on the face, right? If he tries to just attack her once again, she can pull the foot back and kick at him, on the, and then stand up in base and get out, in base and get out. One last time, please. If the attacker lays his weight too much on top of you like this, you might have to use your legs to push him back the power of the legs, and then continue from here. Come on, take it easy. You don't have to be so rough with me. I'm going to do whatever you want. Now with Tida. Don't hurt me. I'll do anything you want. Nancy will help me demonstrate this move now. Well, don't hurt me. I'll do anything you want. You don't have to be rough. Now, Suzanne. Hey, take it easy. Now, Marisa. Don't hurt me. Not your mind. It's all right. Come on, settle down. Take it easy. Hey, cool it. All right, all right. Hey, shut up. All right. Research has shown that another very common situation is something like this. When the attacker is behind your back like this, what would you do? Let me go! Let me go! What are you trying to do? Come on, let go of me! You might end up wearing yourself out, and that's the worst part of it. You panic, you wear yourself out, and then he gets what he wants. This is what I recommend. Once again, when the person is behind your back like this, to try to struggle and just hit the guy, his probably main concern is going to be fight against that and keep you pinned in this position until you get tired. Panic alone is going to be enough to wear you out. So you must stay cool and keep your mind focused in what's the most important thing to do, which is to try to get away from here. If you just struggle and try to wear him out, chances are you're going to get tired before him. So if the person is behind your back, his main concern is to make sure he has the situation under control by showing you that you can't escape. So in order to conserve energy, you should just stay here, try to talk to him. Take it easy. Come on, you don't want to hold me so tight. This might encourage that guy to say, okay, you better do what I say, because in order to rape you, he eventually has to either take your clothes off, you know what I'm saying, undress himself. I mean, there's all kinds of elements that are going to play a part to this. So if you take your time, talk to, this, uh, to the attacker at this point, you might just make him feel that he's got the situation enough under control. At this point, you should look back, look back on both sides to see which side is his head closer to you. Once you locate the closed side that his head is at, as the guy is distracted doing something else, that moment you're going to strike at him a couple of times, forcing him to let go of you. Then you can roll out this way, so you can kick him on the face, or if he has a grip on your feet, slap him on the face, and then get up in base. Tita will demonstrate it again. Come on, we could work this out. What are you doing? <laughs> now, Marisa. Don't hurt me, I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> now, Nancy. Hey, guy, you don't have to hurt me, you don't have to be rough. <laughs> Now, Suzanne. Hey, take it easy. Don't hurt me. Come on, you're gonna do what I say. Sorry, right, don't be so yeah, rough, shut though. up. Shut up! Oh, oh. Uh.
although an assailant is not in a position to rape you from a situation like this, the closeness alone can be very intimidating. What would you do to get out of something like that? Hey, get off of me! What are you doing? Get off! Stop! Trying to outmuscle him again is not the right thing to do. The trick is to keep your hands immediately next to his arm like this and on the other side. This alone will help you control his arm so he can't strike at you. This is a very strong and good leverage in this position. So keep your arms over his arm, almost as if you're caressing the guy at this point. Once again, it's a wise thing to do to try to negotiate and talk to him at this point. Come on, take it easy. Don't be so rough. Do what you want me to do. Once you get this situation pretty much trying to talk to the guy, one way that you can distract and get his attention away from doing what he wants is to bring the elbow up and strike the guy in the face or put your hands like this and with the fingers kind of go right into his eye or something like that so that you can you know, bring his attention to it. Once the elbow comes up and he reacts to this, you now have created enough space that with the foot on the ground, you can swivel your hip away, which creates space for the knee to go between you and him. Now you have the knee here bracing his waist. With the knee here, you move your shoulder back, put your weight again on your foot and scoot your hip away. Now giving you space to plant your foot on his hip, locking the leg once again straight on his waist. With the leg bracing him here, once again it's hard for the guy to push you back. From this position you can either kick him on the head if you want on the way out. If he gets a hold of your feet, you can once again go for the slap and then get up and go. One more time, please. So if the person is holding you here, say, hey, I want to talk to you. Come on, take it easy. Don't be so rough. I'm going to do what you want me to. Then get up in this. One more time, please. Once again, secure the arm so the guy can't hurt you if he wants to. Increase your chance. Always talk to the suspect. Always talk to your opponent. Try to negotiate with him. And don't be intimidated or distracted or annoyed enough that you lose sense. Even if the person is touching you and ripping your clothes off, you have to keep your cool because it's a very important aspect that you don't forget to prioritize. You want to be able to get out of here without getting hurt. So talk to him. Use your elbow strike to distract him here. Force him to hold the wrist. As you scoot your hip away like this, the knee goes into my hip. Move your shoulder back. Scoot your hip once again with this. If he grabs your feet, slap, and then get up in base, and out you go. Tita will demonstrate this move. Now Nancy's turn. No, you don't have to hurt me. We can work this up between us. Now, Marisa. Hey, take it easy. Don't hurt me. Now, with Suzanne. No, please. Don't. You're hurting me. Sometimes you might be so afraid of getting hurt that you might find yourself in this kind of humiliating position. Get down to your knee. Now. Now. Oh. Down. Put your knees on the ground. Right now. Okay, okay. Now what? This is what I recommend in this kind of situation. Get down to your knee. 
at this moment, the first thing you should do is bring your hand inside of my grip and hold inside of your hair so that you protect you from him tugging on your hair at this point. So your hand grip reaches inside of my hand. Once again, please, Maria. The hand comes from the inside, grabs like this. So even if he grabs your hair, it gives you a little support. It doesn't hurt as much. The second hand, you're going to brace yourself so that you don't lose your balance at this point. Okay? Then you should talk to the guy. Take it easy. Don't pull my hair so hard. It doesn't have to be like this. Okay, do what I say, huh? Okay. So at this point, when the guy gets ready to do whatever he has to at this point, that's when you strike at him, forcing him to let go. Sit back, fold your leg under, kick at his leg, and then get up in base and run. One more time, please. So he grabs you by the hair, strapping you here, gets you in this position. Reach inside of his grip, tugging your head tight, brace yourself with his hands so that you don't lose your balance at this point and he can't push you around too much. Strike at him. Always good to do it a couple of times. Roll back on the leg, kick, and get up in base. Once again, I strongly recommend that if you have the opportunity to talk to the guy and try to convince him, explain to him that you're willing to do anything, lie to him, whatever it takes. Lead him to believe that he's got the situation under control. Strike and then go. One more time, please. Hey, go down oh, to your so knee. Not so hard, not so hard. Take it easy, please. Do what I say, all huh? All right, all right. Tide will help me demonstrate this next move. Uh. Now, Marisa. Hey, don't pull my hair. Now, Nancy. Now, Suzanne. Stop. Can I do a little favor for me? Come here, shut up! Now the attacker has added another element, a weapon. More than ever, you must know what to do. It could be extremely dangerous to try to fight off a person if he has a knife and he's in a position like this. By the way, I recommend that if you practice this move, be sure not to use a real knife. It is crucial at this point that instead of trying to fight and attack your opponent, you should be able to talk him out and try to convince him that he has the situation under control. So bring your hands like this over his arm and talk to him. Hey, you don't need that knife. Put that thing down. I'll do whatever you want. From here, you should slide your hand down, secure the wrist, and sit up. As you sit up, slide your hip back, secure your wrist like this, and push off your legs to force him to come down. Trap his foot like that, scoot your hip, and then your shoulder, and then your hip, and then your shoulder. Place your foot on my hip, bring the leg over my back like this, and now torque my arm this way. Now you can let go of one hand, grab the knife, and use it. One more time, please. Once again, always talk to your attacker in a situation like this. Take it easy. Put that thing down. Slide your hand down, secure the wrist, sit up, slide your hip back, Grab your wrist. Keep his elbow glued to the chest so he can't move it away. From here, push off your feet, lean back. Trap my leg. Scoot your hip away and your shoulder and your hip and your shoulder. Plant your foot here. Keep my arm in a 90 degree angle. The leg goes over my back. And as you torque the arm this way, you can now grab the knife, controlling the arm with this hand. Okay. At this point, if you want, you can use your foot to push him away. Then get up in base and go. Let's do one more time, please, on the other side. Man. Okay. 
So, you talk to the attacker. Take it easy, you don't need a knife. Slide your hand, secure the wrist. Slide your hip back, establish your base, keeping my elbow glued to your chest. Push off your feet to force him down. Trap his foot, scoot your hip away and your shoulder. At, at this point, plant your foot on my hip like this so that I can't move. Keep my arm in a 90 degree angle. The leg goes over my back. Torque the arm forward. Get the knife. <clears throat> Tita will now help me demonstrate this one. Come on, you don't need the knife. You can talk about this. Now, Nancy. Look, we don't need a knife here. We're gonna get along just fine. We're gonna check this over. We're gonna work it all out. We're just gonna be together. Now with Marisa. Hey, you don't need that knife. I'm going to do whatever you want. Now, Suzanne. Hey, what's with the knife? Put it over there. Study the tape, practice with a partner, make the moves second nature, and you have a great toolkit of techniques. You will learn signals, behavior, mental tricks, and physical moves that will enable you to identify, avoid, and survive a physical attack. Although no one can guarantee the result of an assault because of all the variables, rape safe may help to even the playing field. You're moving towards awareness and knowledge and away from helplessness and fear. Have fun with it.